sitting in with the fuzziest hair I've ever had in my life, I think. Um, I'm dyeing my hair tomorrow morning. Like, oh, okay. Just getting rid of, like, the blonde or trying to. Oh, excuse me. Um, so this should go, like, oh. kind of more, like, natural, my natural, like, brown. But it's just going to be probably a li- little bit more, like, goldy, honey kind of tones to it than mine's kind oh, of like okay. a dull brown i guess so right yeah. so a little less light than the ends are now yeah so hopefully that helps cover it up <laughs> so oh yeah i'm that's like so funny that's the i wish we had zoom because yeah i would just yeah, i think it always looks pretty good but oh i took I a picture of it. it i can send it to you right now it's hilarious something just got sent to me right and my phone beeped oh it told me my clean feed pass was ready. Thanks, phone. You're a little late to the party. <laughs> I gotta turn that down. Oh, that's gonna be like boom, boom. Every time someone's phone rings and it vibrates on a counter, my mom's like, "Your phone is mooing." <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, "It's mooing." Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind my weird smile. It's actually even poofier now because I was running my fingers through it. Um, <laughs> my hair, but yeah. <laughs> When people ask, we, we should what totally hair... keep this banter. I like it. <laughs> when people ask what my hair looks like without product, it's this. <laughs> and people are like, "Is it Monica in, in the where did they go? Barbados?" A thousand percent. <laughs> I just sent you the picture. It's a hundred percent Monica. When? <laughs> well, I think you might have got it. It's great. You're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> well i've told rain the other day that hers looked a little dry and that she was like dry and looked at me like as if i had three heads and i'm like well just feel my hair for just a second yeah <laughs> and my wife's like just just a little bit more like moisturized and you have a hair mask that we could use because like yeah i don't know it is a little poofy. <laughs> oh, it's even worse now. I could send an updated one. It's even worse. It's great. I love it. <laughs> well, it's hot. I, I just, I was wearing, um, like, kind of those athletic pants that have, like, the, they're stretchy, but they have the, and they have the little panels that are, like, kind of sheer and for, like, airflow and stuff. But, like, yeah, it's very, like, po- I don't know, polyester-y or, like, it's not the most comfortable thing to sit on all day and I've been sitting on it all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to put on some like pajama shorts or something. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll just hope my ass doesn't stick to the, no, I got this pillow thing on it. <laughs> so my ass shouldn't be like, <laughs> Oh, that's what I had to do on the exercise ball. I had to put that blanket on cause my, I was peeling my legs off of it. <laughs> but no, like, can you hear that on the track? <laughs> yeah. My my hair is extra poofy because I, I did, like, wash it to get all the product out, so when I dye it tomorrow morning, it should, like, have a better chance of doing it properly. Because I have to put, like, so much product in my hair how I style it, so. Yeah. Oh, because I don't use product, so I'm, like, they always say to do it unwashed, so I always just do it on, like, the, yeah, the not wash day, which I guess it will be by the time it's tomorrow you wash today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I just can't load up, what, the six products I use every day, including, like, hair oils and stuff. Yeah. I could see how that would affect it. <laughs> yeah. You, you can end up with, like, patches on where your hair had more product in it or not like very easily Ooh. yeah i mean you can end up with that when you just do a shoddy job when it sucks yeah. <laughs> yeah but at least i figured out it's just long enough that if i pull it back completely um and like comb it back it just so fits in a ponytail so tomorrow when i leave the house to go get blood work before i dye it because i want to get that out of the way i can at least put it in a ponytail so it'll just be a frizzy poof on the back of my head it won't be like some crazy uh, i look insane <laughs> it's almost never too short for a ponytail i think but pat will like look at me because half of mine's falling out and i might have to put bobby pins in it isn't it yeah. isn't, isn't it too short to put up 
no, never. It's like, Shut up! I want it off my fucking shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Um. Okay. All right. Shall we start her off? I don't know. Do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I, I don't have a lot for me, which is surprising. I have like one, two, three, like literally like four pages. <laughs> that, that's what I have. Yeah. Um. Ah! This was a hard. If we. I'm going to be yeah. honest, if we hadn't have said, like, in last week's episode, the country we were doing for this, I <laughs> definitely would have texted you and been like, can we pick another one? Because this is very difficult. When you mentioned those cases, I was like, how did you even find those? Well, I kept being like, Slovenia like... crime, and it's like, here's the stats if you want to yes. move here. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> let's just say I found a, multiple cases but they were extremely difficult to research to the point mm -hmm. where mine, um, they're kind of connected and I'll reveal at the end how, but cool. I, there's a, between the two cases, when you search one, the other one comes up, all the suspect pictures for both cases get mishmashed together. So when you Google one of their <sighs> names, it comes yeah. up with the same dude's picture and I'm like, Hey, he's literally... At this point, he's coming up on four different people's names, the one guy's picture, and nobody says, like, oh, here's a picture of two different suspects together, so-and-so's on the left and so-and-so's on the right. So I could never, oh, like, yeah. confidently distinguish any of them apart, <sighs> even the victim. So I'm just gonna put it out there, I will have absolutely no pictures for my case because I couldn't definitively... Pictures! Googling pictures so dangerous! Oh. Yes! I couldn't. I have the same like issue, although albeit maybe there was a same last name involvement too, mm. but like it still was like you, images blah 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 blah, and you're like, but I just saw that for the other person. That can't really be. And yeah. you're like, if I was just like casually just like post this, you know, then you weren't like, is that really the person you're posting the name of? Right. Yeah, Ugh, I couldn't dangerous. even get a definitive answer on who the victim was, like a picture of the fucking victim. So I just mm. won't be posting any pictures. I'll have a picture of other stuff a bit, but it There's won't pictures. be. There's pictures. Yeah. yeah for my... Sorry. Um, but yeah, so we did Slovenia, or yeah, Slovenia, I think it is. Is that how you pronounce the country? I don't even know. Slovenia? Slovenia. Yes, I think it's Slovenia. Yeah, so this is Slovenia, true crime. Um, and I tried looking up interesting facts about them, because I thought that might be fun. There is some fun facts. Um, I didn't end up, like, keeping anything. I was just kind of, like, Googling it. But apparently they have a lot of beekeepers. Like, <laughs> what was it? They're, they have, like, nine, out of a population of, like, 2.3 million people, there's, like, 90,000 beekeepers. Um, which is outrageous, they said. There's... Wow. What, is there, like, a tax cut or something? I have no idea. <laughs> There's one wine, like, vineyard or producer for every 70 to 75 people. Um, <laughs> so they love their wine. I'm like, uh, this sounds more and more like a beautiful country. I don't love bees, because of the stinging, but yeah. I love them because of the pollinating. Yeah, the everything else. Um, <laughs> they just I'm just kind of scared of them, like I am yeah. like wasps and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they have huge, like, forest. I think it said, like, over half of the country is forest. It's a super, super small country. Um, they got some tall mountains, stuff like that. <laughs> they have a lot of lakes, rivers. Where is it geographically? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> From what I read, it was like, it's near the Balkans, or considered yeah. part of the Balkans, so I feel like that's like Western Europe heading towards Russia, Ukraine, and all that kind of, or Eastern, I'm sorry, Eastern Europe. <laughs> yeah. In looking it up, though, I did learn that Slovenia is only 30 years old as a country. Um. Uh -huh. They became a country in the 1990s. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because of the war. I do know not a lot about that, but um, 
Pat, when he was first joined the army, uh, was sent over to, like, that region. So, yeah, oh, okay. there was definitely a big conflict there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow, that's crazy, though. Like, I'm older than that country by, like, yeah. three years. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> that's weird to think of. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, for my two cases i it was very hard <laughs> i'm gonna to... call you two case kelsey yeah. <laughs> well it was really hard to get really any information yeah. and when i found out about the one it kind of leads into the other and then i was like i feel like you... because anytime you google any of the people involved both cases come up and everybody comes up all the suspects the victims everybody comes up so i'm like I feel like I really need to talk about both of these, especially because the one is extremely short. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And there wasn't a lot of different cases. Yeah. Like we may or may not there was have like, said, depending on how much we cut out. <laughs> yeah, there was like a handful of cases at all. I think online yeah. it said there's like 10 murders a year or something. There's like two serial killers listed on like murder Ever. media. <laughs> I guess it makes sense now that it's only 30 years old that they wouldn't have a lot of anything. <laughs> um, oh, but we did choose it because we sometimes look at where we've had listens or downloads. Yeah. And then we're like, well, we might have a listener or two here. Or at least someone that's listened <laughs> once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe somebody Let's... one day would like to know some true crime and our podcast will pop up because we're the only ones that have ever talked about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I love a podcast that highlights something that's a bit more rarely covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my first one is a bank robbery that occurred in 2005. Love it. Well, <laughs> I love a good robbery. It's kind of like a heist, but more yeah. violent, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this occurred on October 31st. So, what? yeah, October 31st, 2005, shortly before 11 p.m. So they were really just trying to ruin Halloween. Um, <laughs> this is so perfect for spooky season. I know. This is going to come out in September. Yeah, this is the last episode, last regular episode in September. Perfect kickoff. Thanks. Nice. Yeah, so <laughs> shortly before 11 p.m. in... I'm going to be terrible with all of these pronunciations of all of these names, and I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> all I know is the J's might sound like Y's. <laughs> yeah. So the bank robbery uh, takes place in Ljubljana in Slovenia. I believe, yeah, it's like Ljubljana. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. And the bank is called the SKB branch bank. And it was nice. robbed in the country's largest bank robbery ever. So and it's 30 year history. Yeah. At this point <laughs> in its 15 year history. Uh, <laughs> a group of at least wow. three robbers armed with assault rifles entered the bank and disarmed the security guards and tied them up before they ransacked over 420 safety deposit boxes over the course of the next seven hours. 420, you think that was intentional? I think someone's definitely been watching Western TV with the guns involved here, too. Probably. Probably. So, after they broke into all these safety deposit boxes, they escaped in two cars with the valuables stolen out of the safety deposit boxes, totaling approximately 32 million euros, or almost $48 million Canadian. Wow. So they got a lot Thank you for of saying stuff. Canadian. Sometimes people yeah. just say doll hairs, and I'm like, you mean American. <laughs> yeah. Um, one source said like 18 million euros, um, but most oh. of the sources said it was about 32 million euros. I feel so. like that was similar to my heist, where there was definitely different amounts proclaimed, yeah. depending who you were talking to. <laughs> so... This one has extremely very little information about it. Um, so after years of limited progress, two men, um, one named Dion Vidmar and Sasso Noset, 
again. Oh, hell yeah. Apologies if I'm pronouncing these wrong. Um, they're, they're both. In... They're probably listening. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. Um, <laughs> so they're both in their 30s, and they were some of the first suspects, and they were arrested. And there was also a 20 year eight year old man who was a suspect. His name is Radimar Sivanovac. Sivanovic. And he had fled the country. Was it A K or I K at the end? I C. Within Oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. Oh I guess Ick maybe then, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And he had fled the country. Uh there was also her Oh, one of these suspects, I couldn't figure out. So Google Translate I was using it where it just automatically translates. So some of the, like, grammar was wrong. Some stuff was wrong. So trying to, like, figure out who was who when they were talking about suspects, just being like, one suspect was whatever. And I'd be like, but which one of the three was it? Um, so they did say, I don't know who, but one of the suspects was caught based on, like, material evidence that was caught at the scene of the crime that they found and like figured out and then another one was caught later on during their investigation but all okay. three okay yeah sorry so you there there was some translated articles and stuff and and it was a couple of the vic or suspects that yeah. got finger so to speak <laughs> yeah they well all of the I articles were word. translated i never found one that was in english really oh yeah. shit um so mine had like at least a wikipedia no. and like a something news that i can't recall right now but it's in my notes <laughs> no all of mine had Ooh. a local news website none of the perpetrators or victims <laughs> had wikipedias there was nothing um, She's like, I'm cobbling it together. <laughs> and I know, I'm bringing I tried. it to you. Um, this is some crack investigative journalism. Right? She's cracking the cryptic code, guys. Yeah, Bravo. I, I found out the site that I was using for pretty much 99% of my um, like source material apparently is like the New York Times where it only lets you read a certain amount of articles in a month. So <sighs> it like. But it does it every couple days, so every couple days I had to try and look it up again because it would unlock the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot nowadays that have a paywall or like yeah. a faux paywall. Yeah. You can keep reading, but we want you to consider. <laughs> well, uh, the thing is, is a lot of those will let you continue forward if you copy it and open it in like incognito mode. On your computer or your phone it'll let you continue sometimes oh so that's always <laughs> you should always try first doing that instead of paying um oh yeah i've never paid i just some yeah. like sometimes they're free <laughs> um yeah so all three suspects that i've mentioned were slovenian citizens and police have also said that they have C filed complaints i don't really know what that means um maybe like warrants or something against two more unknown perpetrators they didn't even say who those people were and police did not say if anything was recovered oh sorry police that did not translate properly at all so they couldn't really rec they said that they didn't recover anything and right. stated that some had been invested in, like, criminal-related operations. Oh, yeah, they probably, like, laundered it already. Yeah. So That would be my guess. Yeah. One of the suspects, uh, knows that he was a, actually a security guard at SK Bank at the time. And, Ooh. yeah, so inside job. He inside had... Job. Uh, gotten all of the necessary information to carry out the robbery as well as a list of the safety deposit box holders um, because there were some like very very rich people I guess that had safety deposit boxes there so he was okay. able to get a list of like their names and which boxes were theirs that's yeah. not great <laughs> no uh, so 
pretty much the last I have about this tiny, tiny case. This was all the information I could get out of it. <laughs> it was so Baby sad. Baby case. Um, so a search of one of this men's homes, again, I couldn't even figure out who it was based on the article's translations. But one of the suspects' houses, when it was being searched, they uncovered six expensive paintings by Ivan Grohar. And those paintings were stolen in September of 2007. And this suspect, whoever he was, also faced money laundering charges. Ooh, and he helped them. Wait, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's the suspect. Confusing when you don't know who's doing what. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like, I, said, I have no theories. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so Vidmar and No said both suspects were sentenced to 14 years in prison. I don't know how much the 28-year-old is going to get from what I could figure out. It, I couldn't find anything super recent that even talked about him being found. So he had fled the country. I don't know if he's even been arrested. So you're saying, like, at least that one suspect got away? Yeah, at least one. So they say there's possibly five involved. Oh, okay. um, two of them have been sentenced to prison and are in prison. <laughs> yeah. Two out of five ain't bad. No. <laughs> two out of at least five? I don't know. <laughs> They're like, um, they just got the dumb ones. <laughs> yeah. So that brings me to my second case. Because, you know, I couldn't just have a ten minute segment, so. Bet you can't pick just one. No. <laughs> oh, if I had to pick one of them, it would be this one. Because there's a lot more to it. I just really right. I had to. I had to intro this case with that one. And it we were come committed. together We were committed end. to the the crimes in Slovenia. <laughs> yeah. So this is the case of Zorica Skurbek, I think is how you would say her name. I'm not sure. Okay, it's a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is 32 and she was actually abducted in broad daylight in Ljubljana in the borough of Ternovo on June 26, 2014. Another abduction? We just yeah. released that um, part two today. Yeah. That tells you when we were recording. <laughs> I have to oh. introduce and just say, when you posted on Instagram the clues to my segment, I sat there going, I don't even understand the clues to my segment. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't read your caption, and I was like, I don't know dog breeds. And I kept looking at it, and I was like, chinchilla chinchilla yes. and then it was like chinchilla butts and then it was like okay so she must be talking about the chinchilla butts yeah and then it was Kidnapping. like so what kind of dog is that and i was like oh it must be a chocho then and i was like chinchilla butts <laughs> but here i think i'm great and like can do clues just because maybe i wrote a couple of quizzes for our book club and they're like okay you're, you're pretty good at like writing like you know but i'm talking like multiple choice like yeah this happened in the book it was it a b c or d but then I, and then i was like here's some clues from my insane mind and everybody was like uh a dog kidnaps a rat and goes off in a bus yeah i read all of the comments and your reactions and i'm like this is hilarious and i love it but your clues even stumped me for like five minutes and it was my segment. It took me five minutes to figure out which of the two cases it was and I was like, that's not Gregory. That can't be Gregory. And it wasn't until I clicked through and saw the bus, I was like, oh, it's definitely the bus then. It would have been better. I'm not, um, you know, great at using the part of Instagram where it's like more like interactive and like paint mode where you can be like, if I could have done like chow chow, but like times one <laughs> or like whatever and then chinchilla minus the chin oh it's the chow chilla yeah buzz, buzz kidnap yeah what it, it's like i'm like ross explaining the like when he's spudnik <laughs> and then like that one girl like the girl he's dating gets it and they're like marry her <laughs> nobody gets you <laughs> oh. Oh. anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, going back to the 
The sad case. So <laughs> Zorica Skurbik, <laughs> um, so she was abducted in broad daylight, um, riding her bike through the Ternovo, kind of like borough, so like community mm. in Ljubljana on June 26, 2014. So she was found the next day. Um, at this time, she was alive, but she was ex- very badly injured. And she was found by the side of the road in the southern outskirts of Ljubljana, which is sad. So... Oh, but she was found alive? Yeah. Uh, oh. So she had, at the point she had been found, she had been subjected to hours of torture. And she had been oh. thrown out of a moving vehicle onto the side of the road where she was found. Oh um, my god. So she was found alive and paramedics were called. However, unfortunately, she did pass away before paramedics arrived to help her on the scene. That's horrific. Yeah. They just like tossed her out like trash. Yeah. So. Oh my god. During this time, Zorica had reportedly complained about being followed. For like the last couple weeks to a couple months before her abduction and her mother says that Zorica and her had gone outside and on multiple occasions witnessed a man pretending like either like sitting in a vehicle in front of their house or across the street or even pretending to sleep in a vehicle in front of their house so he'd like kind of um. lean his like seat back in the car and like put sunglasses on and like have his arms folded and kind of lean back in the seat no nope, but he'd be like watching like that them. yeah also reminds me of a quick side tangent uh <laughs> subreddit or what a reddit question today that was like what was the one thing that happened to you that made you first made you feel old <laughs> and it falling made me asleep think of this in one. public <laughs> Well, this one response was something like, there was a weird van parked across from my house, uh, and it was like one o'clock in the morning, and I just thought, well, something's not right here, until I went out and then was like, oh, whatever you're doing here, you better move on, but then he realized it was just like a couple of young, like, neighbor kids or whatever, maybe, (laughs) like, hooking up, and then he's like, I literally was like the old man, like, get off my lawn, he's like, I'm 35. (laughs) He came out in a house coat on, with a t-shirt and boxers on holding the newspaper. But the parts mom. where people were like, I got excited about a mop and, and everybody was like so relatable and started talking about like mops and stuff. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, we, try, we try to keep it light. I'm sorry. Let's continue so... with the horror. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one as well, I couldn't find a whole lot of information Mm. about but it is a bit better than the other case so for the suspects like right off the bat i guess they didn't really say it in any of the articles but i assume right off the bat they kind of had an idea who was involved so they had three main suspects of the kidnapping torture and then death of zorica so the first gentleman's name is zelko Petrovic? That's how I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna be committed. Um, <laughs> he Commit! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was known to police and he had prior convictions for like drug-related offenses in Austria about four years before, so about 2010, as well as an attempted or a charge for attempted grand theft in Ljubljana. So I don't know when that was from. Ooh, but it was grand theft, so... Yeah. It, uh... Yeah, it wasn't just, like, a popsicle or something. No. (laughs) So, both times, for some reason, it didn't really say, but he had received a suspended sentence. So, he got off with, like, nothing. And he... Slap on the wrist? Yeah. And... Suspended sentence is, like, nothing. Yeah. That doesn't even say probation. That's, like... Something could be coming, but it sounds like it's not. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. And anyway. he was believed to be one of the main kidnappers, uh, along with a gentleman by the name of 
Blagoji Sazdov. Ah, Blagoji Sazdov, <laughs> my buddy. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I literally couldn't find anything about him okay. other than the fact mm-hmm. that he was one of the other main people involved in the abduction and torture. Oh. And then there was Sinad Livadic. It literally is L I V A D I C. Live a dick. Live a dick? I don't know. <laughs> no, L- live a dick doesn't roll off the tongue as, easily <laughs> as a little live a dick does. <laughs> right? Uh, so he, live a dick, participated in the criminal group of the other two, and during the abduction, he, pro- he only really provided one of the cars and he ended up fleeing um, fleeing the country after Zorka's death. Um so he pretty much providing just... the cars and he was the getaway driver or he just gave them a car. I uh, from what I understand he gave them a car and he maybe like disposed of one of the cars. They had multiple cars going on. Ah uh. it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, at the time, the case was still being investigated, of course, and police now had another suspect added to the group. I'm not sure how far along in the investigation this was. Uh, this gentleman is Milan Trikovic. Or, Trivkovic. There's a V in there. Trivkovic. And... and it, I don't know. I've heard it said Milan as well. Milan, probably. I don't know. I uh, when I did work, depending on what we cut out again, I mentioned that I worked as a bartender. That was at a hotel, um, that was owned by, oh my God, their last name was Mergenovic, so they had to be from some area in that region. I would hazard to guess. I just can't remember exactly which one, and they had a son named Milan. Yeah. Yeah. So he was involved in the planning of the abduction. So the next big section I have is what happened in court. Um, so there was a lot of issues in court between all of the suspects and uh, Zorica's mother. And Zorka's, like, brothers. So, relatives apparently were pretty, like, vocal during court. Like, Zorka's relatives. So, and they released a lot of, a few statements about how they felt about the court going through. So, one of the quotes just says, Executioners, murderers such as punishment it's a shame if it was your daughter we would get 30 years and prosecutors said that the plea agreement that was made with the suspects and that the verdict that was handed out were appropriate which we'll get to at the end i don't think they're appropriate but um, okay sorry did we say what their sentence was already not yet no oh okay (laughs) so trivkovic he was the last one that was added they pretty much just said that he helped plan the abduction and he refused to Mm. take like a plea deal or admit to any of the allegations against him and clamming up (laughs) yeah when petrovic sazdov and livadik stated that they regretted their actions nadia skirbik who's Zorka's mother uh, mm. raised her voice and said, quote, dare, do you dare look me in the eye? And the other relatives said, quote, are you sorry now? But what were you doing when the unfortunate woman looked you in the eye? You got on the woman. It's a shame. Uh, the mother states that she recognized Trivkovic as the man who was watching and was sitting in his vehicle in front of Zorka's window in the car. And when the judge read the verdict with all the details of how the unfortunate woman was abducted, tortured for at least 10 hours, and then thrown out of the car 
with a damaged heart and lungs, you could hear her mother sobbing. Oh, no doubt you could. Yeah. That's fucking horrific. And when you have a child, it's just that much easier to imagine. Mm -hmm. It's, it's no, no, that's, that's rough. Yeah. So, Nadia Skirbek already explained in the investigation that Zorka believed that she had been pursued and observed one thing said by police and criminal investigators at all times. So we'll get to maybe why she felt like it was police and criminal investigators kind of towards the end. So on a sunny and warm day, I assume in the April before she was abducted in the summer, Zorica noticed a man who was allegedly sleeping in the car in front of her window and had told her mother Nadia about it. Quote, I went to see him. He was stronger. He was sitting in a light blue car. As Judge Vesna Pojed read her confession, and Nadia Skirbik, or sorry, and Nadia Skirbik's eyes kept looking at the accused Trikovic, or Trivkovic. Can't read. Ugh. All these no, names. No, it's okay. I was also just thinking we used to work with a Vesna, and both actually there was two at a at our. Oh, place that's true. Work yeah. at, and they both their last names were like super similar. I swear there was just like an ick on the end of one and not on the other. Wow. <laughs> Very similar, yeah. They must have um, some names they use a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Zorka's mother kept nodding and looking at Trivkovic, um, saying, you were the one. In the end, she couldn't stand it, and she turned straight towards him and claimed that she was now 100% sure that he was sitting in the car. And Trivkovic replied, what? saying, I wasn't, ma'am, I'm innocent. He's always been adamant he was innocent. I don't really know what to... I don't believe any of them. They sound like shit people. Oh, okay, but yeah, she does. Yeah. Hmm. So, Nadia Skirbik, um said in court as well, quote, it was at half past four. What? It was at half past four, three... Oh, okay. Half past four, three or four weeks before the abduction, and he had his head tilted back and pretended, sir, to sleep. You can't tell me it wasn't you. I have never lied in my life, and even today I do not lie. Trivkovic's lawyer, oh my god, his name is just a whole bunch of accents, I'm not even going to try it. He <laughs> emphasized that at the time when his client allegedly was observing, Zorica's apartment and at the time that her mother Nadia had mentioned that that actually didn't match the time that Nadia had given during the earlier investigations regarding the man in the car and that also at the first interrogation she didn't even mention that there was a man in the car and during the initial investigation she didn't even recognize Trivkovic's photos at all. He was like a stranger to her. And now she's adamant that he was the one that was sleeping in front of their house for like weeks on end. I mean, never trust an eyewitness because yeah. it's just not always 100%. It, even as convinced as they might be. Right? Yeah. <sighs> That's, That's been shown thing. like time and time again. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, just yesterday, she said, quote, do you realize what condition I was in? What shock? I don't really... Oh I feel like this translation <laughs> was, like, Wrong. mixed up somewhere because it just says, and don't be ashamed. And that's what Nadia oh. said to the lawyer. I don't understand the, and don't be ashamed part. Uh, I don't know either. It was the condition I'm in that... Um... You'll understand once we watch Big Lebowski, there's a song and it's like, I just walked in to see what condition my condition is in. <laughs> oh. Immediately, that's where my mind went. No, no question. Um, anyway, guys, don't worry. I'm making her watch Big Lebowski so that she, yeah. she'll be inaugurated. 
No, that's not the right word. Indoctrinated. <laughs> Exposed sure. to the classics. <laughs> I was planning on watching it. Uh, well, no, I I did. I swear I heard someone like mention it on their list of like favorite movies the other day because I've been, you know, listening to a lot of podcasts, of course. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so Triv Kovic throughout this whole time is like adamant he's innocent and Zorka's brothers, Bojan, Bojan mm. and Zoran. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Wait, the Zohan? No. Zoran. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad joke, because there's, like, that Adam Sandler movie, Don't Mess yeah. with the Zohan. Ugh. It's not his best. I will yeah, not defend awful. him on that one. I do like Adam Sandler, <laughs> but that one's not great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, they were also questioned, and Bojan confirmed that his mother had told him after the first main hearing in court after they got home, that she had recognized Trivkovic, saying that he was the one who was in the car in front of their apartment at the time. So now, like, um, like, her sons are backing her up with saying she did tell them, even though she didn't tell investigators at their first meetings, that she recognized him. She told her sons, I guess. Oh, so let's predate that memo by saying, yeah, yeah, she mentioned it to us. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have any loyalty to her. <laughs> She's just our mother. Um, <laughs> mother. <laughs> so in like the most up to date thing, I guess, or, um, sorry, they did the say latest. that I have that later. I, like, changed the order of all my notes, like, a couple hours ago. Um, <laughs> some of the quotes don't make sense anymore. Oh, God. Um, quotes are... I always am like, what? Why did I put this here? Yeah. <laughs> no. um, so, Trivkovic is charged with the fact that he provided the car in which Zorka Skurbek was taken away and that he was the one who watched over her from his vehicle in the weeks before the abduction so that the group would learn her habits and like routines and would be able to plan her abduction more easily. Right. And mm. Trivkovic Gross, also yeah. allegedly took one of the cars uh, to the place of torture, but he, but it stated that he did not like participate or take part in the torture itself. I mean... That's a whole legal offshoot where it's like, what is that? Guilty by association? Like, yeah. uh, also accessory. You're oh, actually there. Accessory. Yeah. Or that's not the right. I'm not thinking of guilty by association. It's like that guilt by omission, or like you're not, you're not bringing attention to it, so you're guilty in that way because you're a bystander that's not doing anything. I forget. But he what. helped plan it. So, it's even more than that. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. You're definitely involved then. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Um, so, in what they said during court, what really happened is, according to the prosecution, Petrovic, together with Sazdov, took 32-year-old Skurvik from a bicycle in Ternovo, as I said, at around 6 p.m. last it says last year, but in 2014. Okay. And it says in a masked manner, so I don't know if they put something over her her face or head, or they had masks. But apparently right, they probably took at her... least they had masks. Yeah. And they put her in a car that was being driven by Petrovic, and she was taken to a forest not far from, I assume, her house, and tied to a tree where she was brutally tortured for almost nine hours, mainly by Petrovic and Sazdov. So, Jeez. they don't release, like, really any details about anything. Right, I'd rather not yeah. know, and I wish she didn't have to go through that or know herself. So, yeah. towards morning, after this torture, they took her to the pod pack? and threw her out of the car. So I think that was probably somewhere on the road. Um, and they threw her out of the moving car into the ditch. As I said, that she was- That is just extra. <clears throat> you know, yeah. it's just salt in the wound. 
You just can't, like, leave someone for dead, like, quietly on the side of the road. You literally had to throw her out of a moving vehicle. Yeah. That's just, like, that pisses me off. It all pisses me off. <laughs> but. Yeah. Ugh. So, as I said, she was very badly injured. This source said she had a broken rib um, that pierced her lungs and mm. killed her again before paramedics arrived. The car that, I guess, she had been transported in was uh, taken to a different location and set on fire, and then they then all piled into a different vehicle, which Livadik sold in Serbia a week later. So they had, like, two different vehicles they were using. Yeah, they're not stranger to any of this. It sounds like they've done this kind of shit before. But, so where this kind of gets interesting, and this is how I was kind of like really is the court during her the trial also reviewed the case of a different criminal group that had been tailing Zorica that was also involved involved in drug trafficking and they were claiming that at the time of Zorica's kidnapping and torture they were also planning to kidnap Zorica so uh, why do you think what? Like, uh, yeah right that's where I was like really like a separate drug trafficking group like criminal... you might even have to say that one more time sorry <laughs> right yeah so during this court a procedure separate. they literally brought forth evidence that a different criminal group that was operating at the time also was claiming that they too had plans to kidnap Zorica She's just that, like, hot to trot. Not that's not right. No. But like, they're like, they want, they want to kidnap her too? Yeah. Why is she so prominent? I forget. I'm like, I don't get it. You, you don't know crazy. yet. There's literally no clues. That's why. <laughs> Until, like, the very end. So I'm going to go through the convictions, and then I'll see if you can figure it out. I don't oh, know if you will, because I didn't get it. I had to read it, like, five times. <laughs> Especially with how Google Translate tried to word it to me. I was like, this, these sentences make no sense. Um, no, and I'm out of brain juice. I gotta get a refill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm hit almost me. Done. So <laughs> Petrovic, Sazdov, and Lividik were all sentenced for criminal association with each other because they're pieces of shit. And right. Petrovic and Sazdov were additionally convicted of the kidnapping and torture because um, Lividic only supplied a vehicle. Um, okay. Their whole thing, their sentences, I do not agree with. So Petrovic, in total, received 17 years. So kidnap, torture, murder. 17 years. Right, and he was part of the planning committee well no he was a main participant <laughs> right like that's yeah. what i mean it's like these people are definitely implicit in this crime yeah. and he, only 17 much? years uh, i know it's like what's the what's the maximum there you would think it would be like at least like 25 to right. life or something i have no idea um and Whoa. sazdov was sentenced to 14 years and okay. Livadik was sentenced to only two years and two months for his acts. What? Yeah. I don't like that. And they I... said that was because he played a significantly smaller role in the act of torture. Um, because he pretty much disposed of a vehicle and supplied a vehicle. But, I mean, still... That's hard, yeah, because it's like you definitely knew what was going on. Yeah. So, sure, yeah, you might just, I just, it's just my car, I didn't know what was happening, but it's like, you obviously knew something shady was up. Yeah. If, and you can't really argue that you didn't know it yeah. was something that, but yeah, like, fuck. So, after being acquitted in 2016 due to lack of evidence... Trivkovic was sentenced to seven years and two months in prison in a repeat trial. So he was a main player. Or, no, he was the planner. He was the one that was, like, creeping outside her house. 
Oh, um, the stalker. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. So he was sentenced to seven years and two months in a prison trial, repeat trial, as the judgment was declared in 2018. That was like the most up to date I could find for any of these guys, really. They all pretty much have appealed their thing sentences like 150 times, and it's like <laughs> ongoing even today. But that's the most I could really find. So one got so 17 they're all still years. In jail. Yeah, one got 17 years, one got 14, one got two years, two months, and then the other one got seven years and two months. So. Wow. Yeah, not that's... enough for any of it. No. But... That's a little bit <clears throat> depravity. Let me. Just... Yeah. So. That's crazy. The reason why I wanted to cover these is because something links the bank heist to Zorka's murder or torture. Do you have that? Oh, yeah, yeah, we haven't said. It's just two different... Yeah, they seemingly, like, are totally unrelated <laughs> until <laughs> a like, small uh, Yeah, part. I don't see a link unless I'm missing something, which I'm sure so, I am. <laughs> I, like I said, I had to read this, like, seven times and however Google translated this because I didn't, it didn't make sense. But listeners let us know yeah if you guessed it let let me know before i re before i reveal it to alana so the motive because you're probably asking well what was the motive for this 10 hour or between nine and 10 hours of torture like what the hell i mean and why did she yeah, have it's hard to say a second criminal group that was wanting to kidnap her so very confusing right <laughs> That's why I was like, what's so popular about this girl? Aww. So they allegedly... Not popular. Not the kind of popular you want to be. No. <laughs> no. So they allegedly did all of this because Zorka Skurbik's partner was Dijon Vidmer, who was convicted and currently in prison from the high-profile robbery of SK Bank. They wanted oh, the for information... Oh, loud. Right? They wanted the information on where the approximately millions of euros were hidden, which the police had never found. And Vidmar, he was like, I guess, asked to appear in court. Um, he was summoned, but he didn't show up for like Zorka's trial. I don't know why they wanted him there, maybe to be like character witness or something. Mm. But he had during the time of her murder, he was serving out his 14-year sentence at the Maribor prison. Yeah. So because of this, when you Google her name, all of the suspects for both cases come up. When you Google any of the suspects' names, her picture doesn't come up, but every single one of the other pictures comes up. Most often, from what I could tell, it's Trivkovic, like, comes up. Even though he was not related to the bank heist, his picture is always used for the bank heist suspects as well. So it was like... Okay, and that wasn't the one she was no. dating. No. So, yeah. I couldn't reliably figure out any of the pictures, including who Zorica was. So oh, no. Yeah. I'll yeah, have you're a picture. It was so hard to pin down a picture. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it was very you know difficult for me too as as hard as it was to like find a case <laughs> yeah so i'll have oh. like a picture of the bank um i can't i think i have a picture of what the painter that when they were searching the one suspect in the bank robbery's house i've been grohar i have a picture of him he's the one that had the expensive or he's the <laughs> painter whose expensive paintings were found in one suspect's house um <laughs> and i'm pretty oh sure God. that was it we can make a picture of the country of Slovenia. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So when I was looking it up, when they talk about one, it's almost always, they have like a little excerpt about the other one. So I was like, oh, they are kind of connected. And I was like, since there's only like a dozen cases in all of Slovenia, to have two of them connected, you know. Yeah. And definitely not a dozen that are, you could do an episode on. No. 
A full episode, or a full case, yeah. I feel like you could have done all of them in this episode, because some of them are extremely <laughs> short. <laughs> like, the bank one is literally three it, paragraphs. <laughs> right? Even me, I usually have, like, seven, eight pages, I got four. Yeah. <laughs> three and a half, if you want to be real. <laughs> yeah. Just make that but anyway, that was really double space oh, yeah. it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Your name doesn't count as part of the essay. <laughs> <sighs> All right, we'll be back after these messages. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. And now that we're back, welcome to Castles and Cryptids. I'm yeah. Alana. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Gussie. <laughs> uh, now that that's done. Okay. So, <laughs> for my Slovenian true crime, I also had to pick two cases because it they were very short yes you know compared <laughs> to our norm, normal ones <laughs> yeah. yeah and also yeah good for you guys not very many murders in your 30 year history so that's good yeah <laughs> but you guys uh, need to report more and <laughs> uh i don't know I... <laughs> it made it very difficult I know, but just knowing how much that region has had, like, they're only formed as a country then because they were fighting for right. their independence in a war, so it's like, I feel bad, and like, good for you for making any strides in the in the forward direction, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but, okay, I got this guy. His name is Silvo Plutt. Ooh. I think it's Plutt. It's like slut with a P, so... <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> I only just thought of that now, but I was plot, like, yeah, plot. I'm guessing that's how, yeah. <laughs> like putt, putt, golf. Plot, plot. Put, putt, yeah. <laughs> uh, Except he's been called one of the worst serial sadists in the Balkans. Uh, dun, dun, dun. No. Great. <laughs> no, plot, plot, no. No. <laughs> I know. You're you're one of two on Murderpedia. I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah. So this douchebag was born on 19 in 1968 in Nova Mesto, Slovenia, and he exhibited some telltale signs of sadism by um doing the killing and mutilating of animals. So that was their first clue, I guess, that he was not right in the head. Oh, okay. Yeah. And his first actual murder, I don't have much on his backstory, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was, but yeah, this is not great because it was his school friend that he killed. Wow. And yeah, her name was Marianka Majazic, I think. And that was in 1990. Um, so at this point, I believe they're teenagers yeah because he was born in 1968 so that's what he's like 22 oh, okay. um she had been on her way to her job at the shoe factory when plutt hailed her over so it's just yeah he uses the fact that they know each other against her which is so rotten yeah i hate that exactly. never make friends <laughs> have no it just friends. totally takes advantage of her yeah I would never do that to you. Anyway. Thank you. I would never do that to you either. I would never use our friendship to lure you into a murder situation. No, and I also think you can have guy friends that don't want to do that too. Yeah. I know it's sometimes an unpopular opinion, but I think guys and girls can be friends. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> so she, okay, so he hailed her over and she pulled over and let him in the car Whereupon he attempted to sexually assault her, and as she defended herself against him, he stabbed her. I hate him already. <sighs> His school friend, Marianka, yeah. It's just gonna get worse. He began dismembering her body, and then moved to a pond to fish, finish up disposing of it. Oh my god. Yeah. So ratchet. He threw her limbs and body parts into the pond and basically they had no seemed to have no problem finding him for that one though so he was convicted for this killing and sentenced to 15 years 
of which he did serve 13. So he did do some time and over a decade. Hmm. It seems like all their sentences seem short, but maybe we're just to the just used to like U.S. and Canada where we seem to hit people pretty hard. I know. Yeah, 15, like, as life would seem, like, short. It's like, that's not a life. It's usually 25 if it's going to be life, which is what you're normally going to get in North America if you get convicted of murder, but... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It, It seems to go case by case in all of these darn true crime cases. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he did get out, yeah, he was supposed to serve 15, he did serve 13, which is more than I've seen in some cases, so that makes me a little bit, you know, happier, quote unquote, but yeah, he was said to be let out due to, you know, kind of good behavior, but many of his fellow inmates alleged that he sexually assaulted them in prison as well, so can't have been that good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if that they don't seems want ridiculous. It, it's, it's still rape, even yeah. if it's in prison. Yeah. Uh, he went on to rob a post office. Just a little connection with your <laughs> robberies. Yeah. Robbery crime. Uh, yeah, he went a little postal, but no. <laughs> he robbed a post office. And when the heat started to get too much for him for that... He fled rather than face another conviction or prison stint. He fled the country. Oh, okay. And he and his other ex-con buddy that he knew took off to Aleksinak, Serbia. I believe Pat's been to Serbia. He's definitely been to Kosovo. Uh Um, Yeah. But he didn't lay low there. He actually killed 25-year-old Yasmina Jozik, or Jozik, by stabbing her. Bite marks and cuts in the shape of a cross indicated she was further tortured before she succumbed to her injuries. But Silvo made a crucial mistake this time, and he left his hat at the scene of the crime. Oh, I hate this dude. Oh. He's just also not very good, though, yeah. right? Like, he just gets caught. It's like, are you dumb? I don't know. He doesn't look dumb, but I don't know. I've been watching a lot of... He's got this long, stringy hair and kind of a ratty face. I don't know how else to describe it. It's, yeah. I've been watching a lot of forensic files. (laughs) Um, And... Because it's on YouTube for free, like, all the seasons. Not all of the episodes. Sometimes there's, like, four episodes out of, like, 30 in a season missing. And it's like, ah, the majority of them are there. Sounds like Netflix a bit, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So they... I can't even remember what the case was. It was one I watched today. Oh, it was a guy, his... um, What? He used his... He had just gotten out of prison. I think he was on parole or something. And he used his dad's truck to, like, kidnap and, like, rape this 18-year-old girl. Oh, and my God. And he let her go. And she was, like, very, very good. So she made sure to leave, like, as much evidence as she could inside the truck. She had really d- good descriptions of him and what the truck looked like and everything. So they caught the guy, like, very, very quickly. So they show up and at the guy's house and his dad answers the door and they're like yeah we see the truck and stuff and they're like can we look at it and the dad's like sure and at this point in the episode they didn't reveal that the dad and it, like his wife are the ones that called the tip anonymous tip in on their own son um that they thought he did it because they had released a description of the truck and they're like that's our truck and we didn't do it so clearly the son did it because he just borrowed the truck and oh they, no yeah so they had called a tip in so the one they're like can we look at your truck they were like sure go ahead and they found like all of the evidence in it and then they went and arrested him i think he was at some like group meeting i don't know if it was like alcoholics anonymous or something i can't quite remember but they literally okay. the cops just walk in the room and he the guy they're looking for just immediately stands up and puts his hands in the air 
Like, they didn't even need to say they were there for him. <laughs> he just surrenders, and they ask him, and he's like, yeah, I murdered her. Like, and it was like, oh, my. He's basically or, like, I yeah, can't I believe I got away with it this long. <laughs> yeah, he was like, yeah, I raped her. And then it was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. And the parents just know the whole time, and he's, like, he was still probably, like, living with them and stuff. Ugh. Well, it had, <sighs> what was it? It was only, I think, a couple days um, from, like, okay. when she was released, like, just a couple hours after he had, like, kidnapped her or whatever, he had released her back to, like, her house, like, a block away, and she ran home or whatever, and then they called the cops immediately, and they, like, started searching for the vehicle, and then they couldn't find the vehicle themselves the next day, so they released, like, the description of the vehicle, I think, like, the day after that. And oh, then they got sorry. So, like, she yeah. survived and everything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, wow, she was a crazy. great witness. She was, like, really, really good. Yeah, there's a bunch of shows called, like, I Survived and stuff where I'm like, yeah. ooh, that stuff is insane. Yeah. But it gives you, like, a kind of weird hope that if that would happen to you, like, you might have gleaned something that you could get out of it, too. It's, yeah. Yeah. I get why people listen to it. I, I like listening to stuff too where people get out of crazy situations um we don't have any of that today but we should no. do something like that in the future yeah <laughs> terrible segue yeah no. we have to do a <laughs> i survived episode a survived like yes then we can share oh, totally. some like victims triumphing over what happened to those stories we don't always yes. get to talk about those all the time. That's what I liked about the some of the kidnapping cases that we picked, the ones where they actually were able to get away, whether it was after a few hours, like in the Chowchilla case, or yeah. a few... Uh, Years a decade, later. in my case. But, like, yeah. at least she, you know, kind of has what you call it a happy story in the end. Like, she's, she's yeah. living a life. Like, yeah, she's still feeling effects of it, but... She's still she's alive. She's alive. Yeah, and yeah. she's back with uh, she's her helping family. other people. Yeah, and yeah. has more of a like has a purpose I think that is keeping her going and she looks beautiful. Yeah. Anyway. Um what did I say? Oh yeah, he left his hat. Was that what I said? Yeah. Was the last? Okay. He's, yeah, <laughs> he sounds stupid. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and then not long after this hat leaving incident. He shot and killed a man named Milovan Mlad Mladnovic, I'm guessing. <laughs> There's a lot so of then... dick names. Oh, exactly. Vic yeah, and dick like... names. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, it's like when you do what is it? Um, I worked with a guy that was at the Danish last name. It has like the double A's, Klostergard, and yeah, mm. you get a lot of different things. Anyway, you can kind of tell where people are from that way. Sort of. <laughs> I'm awful North at that kind of stuff. I'm awful at that kind well, of stuff. I have no idea about anything. About people's last I, names. I don't feel I like tell. I do either. No, but I do find it interesting. Like, didn't I tell you guys on here or somewhere perhaps that I knew P Peters might have come from the French Petra, but I didn't know that uh, Petra might mean clown. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't remember if I said that on here, but I remember my friend Taylor. So. Who, you know Taylor. She also lived in New Brunswick for a while, and like, uh, had like she's has more French in her family, and she's like, that's clown. <laughs> <laughs> God only knows. I was um, never that good at French, so <laughs> who cares, right? I know I'm a clown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yes, this reminds me of your case because. He tried, or he robbed a girl, sorry, I know, I'm not excited that he robbed her, but he robbed a girl named Milena Radulovic, but he did not kill her. Not only did he not let her get away, she was able to help police identify him and convict him. So yeah. much like what you were saying, it's like, that must feel nice to like take some power back to yourself if someone's right. made you a quote unquote a victim. Yeah. So this guy, Naboisha Petkovic, 
similar to a last name you had. Yeah. He, he was a retired officer who worked on the case, and he said, she spent four hours with a serial killer, and she managed to stay alive. That's incredible. I think she only saved herself thanks to her exceptional intelligence and mental strength. She didn't show fear. She defied him. She even got him to smoke cigarettes with her. Those cigarette butts provided a DNA profile that was compared to the clues from the scene of Yasmina's murder, which allowed us to identify Plutt. She described him so perfectly that I had his picture in my head, which almost completely coincided with the photo we later received from our Slovenian colleagues, says Petkovic. And that's from a Telegraph article I read. Wow. I know, that's it awesome. really paints a picture that she really helped. Yeah. I mean, anyway. that's what they say, just be the best witness you can be. I just still, I still not quite sure. She must have, like, appealed to his, I don't know, emotional side, his sensibilities in some such a way that he felt like he didn't have to kill her or that she wasn't a threat or, I don't know. It's very strange. It doesn't really go into detail, right? Yeah. It's just like, she got into smoke with her and I just, like... I don't know, that can be, a, like, a definitely a starter conversation if you don't know anybody, and I used to smoke, and, like, you can strike up a conversation with someone when you're outside having a cigarette, but, like, I still don't know how she would use it to, like, ultimately distract him from killing her. I don't know, that's right. crazy. Let's yeah. have one last, let me have one last <laughs> cigarette. Oh, can I have another one? Oh, can I have another one? For four hours yeah. straight. <laughs> really, I need another smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Just, like about to pass out yeah um so police began a round the clock search for silvo Pl silvo plot oh hang on i have to burp oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> macho man randy savage oh yeah no. <laughs> Um, hours separated us from capturing him. We learned that he fled to Bujanovac and from there to Slovenia via Kosovo. I am very sorry that we didn't catch him and prevent him from continuing his bloody rampage, Petkovic says. Boo. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. He... Although his ultimate, like, body count isn't super high in the same way that you think that, like... Or some people are like, oh, you know, it's like the Jack the Ripper. You think he'll have killed at least ten people when, like, the arguable amount is, like, five, maybe more. Depends on yeah. what you attribute to him. Yeah. And you got people out there that are, like, 20. And you're like... Isn't it crazy how some serial killers get, like, so much attention? Then you hear of one where they're like, they're probably the most notorious serial killer and then you hear that they killed like almost like a hundred people and you're like how do i not know about them yeah oh. there's it's a crazy. lot that don't live in like canada or u.s that are like that that are just crazy yeah but still they say there could be at least 30 roman in the u.s at any given time it's pretty crazy yeah. thanks ed camper <laughs> I think he's the one that gave us that stat or whatever. Originally. Great meme. Oh, yeah. There was Thanks, a Ed Camper. The more you know. <laughs> that would be a great meme. But no. <laughs> there was one today that was like something like, did you ever feel more useless at your job as the people that were assigned to guard Ed Camper? And then the picture was of him towering over yes. all the people walking next to him while he's in... He was basically in handcuffs. Like, he looked like he could easily take those handcuffs and strangle any one of those yeah. guys. Because <laughs> he's, what, he's almost like seven feet tall or something, and he weighs like 300 pounds. <laughs> right. If anyone watches wrestling or anything, it's like the big guys, like the big show. Like, yeah. I don't know, maybe Andre the Giant. I can't remember how tall he was, but yeah, he's fucking <laughs> huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, hang on. So... I like I, I already mentioned it a little bit that that within the region it's kind of a, not really important to the case but important to remember that there was like 
a lot of conflict there. Um, the cause of a war was from actually Pat's birthday, 28th of February. Um, <laughs> but like from 1998 and apparently lasted till 1999 and it's like Yugoslavia and Kosovo and all that. And I think that's probably when Slovenia got made in this yeah. whole turmoil of like, I definitely didn't understand it. I tried to have some from Wikipedia in case we had to talk about it, but there was oppression of the ethnic Albanians in the region. And, you know, that was people from Albania, but also like that ethnically and culturally kind of identified with all that stuff. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's interesting. I feel like I could look into it. I don't know. I find wars horrifying, but fascinating. <laughs> I'm one of those people, no matter how much I ever look into that or they try to drill it in me at school, mm. I never remember anything about wars. It literally I will be in my almost... head for a day and then it just disappears and I don't retain it. I like, I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like, you know what I think I should say is that like, I feel like it's hard to remember because you're also looking for a reason that would propel you to go to war. And probably as women, we just can't understand how any yeah. of these, like, powder kegs could have been sparked by, like, World War One was, like, Franz Ferdinand got shot and, like, he almost didn't, but then he did. And, like, but that was that thing that ignited the powder keg because there was so much tension and, like, it's very hard to remember. Yeah. And I don't know, sometimes Pat will, like, be able to tell me something because he was in the military and so he obviously had to learn it almost beyond school where yeah. he's like yeah, yeah yeah i know about that conflict but like at the same time i don't know i think if we understood how conflicts were formed we would all be considered conspiracy theorists because yeah. they're often very engineered <laughs> yeah and some yeah it is just oh. a lot of just an accumulation of wrong shit at the wrong time really well, that and also that war makes a lot of rich people a lot of money, too. So a lot of them have yeah. all the incentive to go for it. Yeah, I think that's a big factor. So Silvo Plut, the real fucking... <laughs> yeah, the Plut real Lividic, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But he has escaped again, the authorities Ugh. grasped, and he made his way back to Slovenia, his home country. Now there, the Slovenians refused to extradite him to Serbia to face trial, where he had committed his last murder. Uh, yes. Why? You really want to keep him? Like, fuck. Oh. I don't know. That seems such kind of jurisdictional bullshit to me <laughs> yeah like they knew he was wanted for murder he's being refused to being extradited back to serbia where that murder was convicted or um happened so that he could actually be convicted for it and face trial so he was released yeah because that's better like you already convicted him Ugh. in Slovenia. Let Serbia have their conviction and somebody can murder him in a Serbian prison, please. <laughs> please. Yeah. Oh. I know, I wish I knew more about how the the kind of law worked in that case, but it definitely didn't work in our favor. No. Uh yeah, he went he was released, went on to claim that the meet to the media that he had been framed for Yasmina's murder. You know, probably with that hat that got him yeah. from the last one where he left it. Jeez. So, although he seemingly has escaped wrath on those ones, and that happened, uh, then Silvo attacked a sleeping couple on the morning of February 24th, 2006 in Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. We're still just guessing we're saying it right, but I hope so. <laughs> yeah, that's what Google told me. Yeah. I listened well, I to the Google pronunciation of, like, the equivalent yes. of Siri saying it in a white girl voice, okay? <laughs> no, I remember when doing travel insurance that I had a client whose name was, like, it was it was very similar to the city name, honestly. It was, like, Lublia or something, and I was like, oh, okay, so, like, how do you say it? I like to ask people how to say their names rather yeah. than trying to, because <laughs> yes. I find... 
then you're not gonna make hopefully make yourself sound as much of an ass <laughs> and she's like oh yeah and then I was like okay so basically like those kind of sound like eyes all right got it it's kind of like that gotcha <laughs> yeah okay but anyway back to this which is not so funny he attacked this couple in yeah Ljubljana the capital and the husband of this couple that he attacked still well put attacked was named Mirko Alkar, and he was actually supposed to be, um, or supposed to testify against Silvo Plutt in the case of the post office robbery. Oh, so, so he was course, targeted. He targeted someone, yeah, that could provide evidence against him and was going to. Mm. So, sadly, he and his wife, well, maybe this was the name, Liubika? And they were assaulted in their home. Then Liubika was tied up, raped, and her throat was slit with a knife. Jeez. Her husband was actually able to break free and ran for help. So she was the one that actually died in this attack, even though her husband was the one that was supposed to testify. Yeah. Uh, he was tro probably trying to make a husband suffer more. And it's just, it seems, him. yeah. And either way, he's a piece sloppy. of crap. Exactly. Like, he's just like, well, I'm going to go going down swinging or I don't know. Yeah, that was definitely kind of dumb because now he's in Slovenia and he committed a crime there. So they can, in fact, arrest him there now with no extradition necessary. <laughs> Which was the setback before. Yeah, because they so, decided to let him be free instead of sending him to Serbia in the first place. Oh, Yeah, he's like, he's in his home country. He's like, they're not extraditing me to Serbia. I'm good to go here. Then I'm just going to kill someone that's supposed to be involved in my case of the robbery. I hope okay, the husband, buddy. like, sued the country for not extraditing him. See, and I don't know... I didn't find that information. I don't know if you. I would even like to think that. so. Mm -hmm. But at least Silvo Plutt was sentenced to thirty years for Liubika's murder, and that was on the second of October in two thousand six. And then he went through another sentencing on the twenty sixth of April two thousand seven. So just a few months later. And this was for Yasmina's death, because I was wondering if he, you know, got convicted for more than one. It was yeah. hard to find. I was going to say, because he still would be getting out of prison, mm -hmm. like, when he's around 60, if he's convicted for 30 years. He'd be still getting her out when he's around 60. Yeah. Like, True, oh. exactly. He's not put away for life, even though he's committed multiple murders at this point. Like, enough to be considered a serial killer, basically. Yeah. Although, I I hesitate to call him that, but, like, he, he qualifies, you know? Yeah. Um, so, this is basically the end, though, because after being sentenced on 26th of April 2007 for Yasmina's death, he cowardly took his own life on April 28th, 2007. So, two days after he was sentenced to... Wow. Uh, I'll get to it, I think, in a minute, but I believe overall he was sentenced to, like, 116 years. You know how they can, like, have, like, yeah. a lot more than they could actually serve? <laughs> Those always make me happy. I think I saw True. a case once where it was, like, uh, like <laughs> almost 300 years, and I was like, that makes me happy. <laughs> right, that's, you know, all the years you took from all the victims you could yeah. possibly have. Yeah, it makes sense. Ugh. So this douche left a message that he had wanted to be buried with a Bible. Ugh. His relatives... <laughs> get this. His relatives did not want to claim his body, so he was cremated at the expense of the state. Ugh. Not buried with a Bible at all. <laughs> no. Nope. I hope they just, like, dug a hole... And just like, or no, ooh, I don't even know what he was they cremated. Have. I know, cremated. but I, I mean, yeah. what they should oh. do with the ashes? 
what the state should have done with the ashes. What's the worst thing they could do with it? Oh, God, I don't know. Fed them to animals? No. (laughs) I don't know. No, that'd be me to the animals. Uh, (laughs) Chuck them into a hurricane? Fuck it, no. (laughs) That's a really hard one. (gasps) That's almost like... Could you sprinkle them into the sewer? Oh, probably. Lift up a manhole cover. Yeah. But then you'd have to, like, de- dehumanify the water, wouldn't you? Because they have to treat the water. Um, oh, yeah. At that point, when it's in the sewer, there's poop and everything in there. It's, yeah. It's not it's drinking water yet. Floating with turds and rats. That's where you uh, <laughs> Too many cases where there's people decomposing in the water. <laughs> Yeah, I like. Ugh. Yeah. It's so gross and I terrible hate it. and sad. I hate it. Um. Okay. Sad one's almost done. So, wait. You have a happy one? Question. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. <laughs> so yeah, he was cremated. <laughs> and then I thought this was just kind of fun. I took this quote from uh, one of the articles in his testimonies printed by the media. Plut said that while he was in Serbia, he had the opportunity to see folk star Svetlana Seka Raznatovic. As he said, he saw her in Sokabanya and he liked her a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> there used to be a Svetlana character on the Canadian show that Jonathan Torrance had uh what was it called Jonavision I used to watch that oh. and then my family would be like oh Svetlana and I'm like I'm not Svetlana I'm just Alana <laughs> <laughs> and there was a Svetlana on um Shameless <laughs> oh true yes yes I think it's pretty common uh yeah. Yeah. Eastern European Russian name. <laughs> I don't know about I have to ask Ressa maybe. <gasps> I haven't talked about her all episode. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ressa. My sister. Okay. Oh, also, this might sound incredible, according to some articles, but women <laughs> seem to really like plot. You know how like people will message oh, inmates fuck. and write letters to them. That's it. I'm Googling him. What's his first name? Hold on. Silvo. 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 Oh, he is long hair. I don't know. I said rat-like face because I just... Not super rat-like. Like, he has a oh. chin, but he's just... Before I... Know, beady, beady little eyes and stuff. I don't know. When his... So when you Google him, when it does that auto... Like, Phil, where it just starts recommending stuff. Before I clicked yeah. on it, it showed a little tiny picture, and I thought it was a woman. <laughs> just because yes. of the long brown hair. Totally long. Delicate Ugh. features. He looks like... He looks so normal. I hate to say out of all of them, he looks fairly normal. Yeah. No 70s serial killer Coke bottle glasses. No, he looks like some <laughs> hippie dude with long hair and, like, a freaking ponytail and a middle part with brown hair. Okay, but here's a game. No. A <laughs> game. Experiment. Well, because what, or I think it was Murderpedia said that his cousin, Bojan, or Bojan Plutt, was also a serial killer. So when we talked about Googling people's images, I tried to Google his cousin and pictures of him kept coming up. So I couldn't even verify if that was true. If he was actually also a serial killer. Because, like, no other sites had any articles. If you Google Bo Jan Plutt, you got all these articles about Silvo. So I was like, I don't know. Possibly yeah. his cousin's also a serial killer. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Weird. Yeah, ooh, we should try and do that one time. An episode where, like, multiple people in the family Familiar. have been, like, career criminal type things, whether they're serial killers or what. Yeah, I'm sure there's a few. If you, like, yeah, like you say, you don't limit it to necessarily, like, serial killers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, I watched, speaking of serial killers, 
Pat was putting on the latest um, Dexter uh, trailer before I came up to record. Oh. Looks good. Yeah. Um, it's like did they have a Jennifer... new one in the... Oh, I haven't seen the one with I What's Her Face. With Deb yet. It might not be new. No, it might have been out for a few months. Because I know that they've been talking about the return of the show for a few months. But, well, like, they... yeah, it's like... Jennifer, his sister's now the voice in his head instead of his father giving him, like, mm. almost like his conscience, if never, if anyone's never seen it, but, like, kind of acts as, like, the angel on his shoulder or whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. That must be the newest trailer, because they only announced she was even going to be in the show at any capacity oh. in the last couple weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, sh oops. That was my drink. They showed her in this one. <laughs> oh, okay. Her yeah, her hair's all long. I'm like, okay, I haven't seen her in a long time. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and <laughs> I do have one more. Enough about Dexter. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, because like we said, it was hard. You had to kind of pick smaller cases. So this one's pretty short, but it was that cyber crime. I think you had stumbled upon it too trying to look for a case maybe yeah i sent you like a list after i read like a paragraph <laughs> each of like every crime i could find um <laughs> i know i didn't want to end up doing the same one as you or anything but yeah. i still had to like refer to i was like fuck what is she covering again because like when my thing had a post office robbery i was like shit wasn't kelsey covering a robbery <laughs> yeah did i just step on her toes i like had to keep double checking <laughs> Yeah, but this one's like a cyber crime, so it's it's a bit different than what we usually cover, I would say. Yeah, I don't think we've but... ever done a cyber crime one. I just thought it was the mm. little like blurb I saw about it was just kind of cool. No, we've done petty crimes, so like one was like advertising the bikes on, you know, whatever yeah. the internet, but I wouldn't consider it a cyber crime. No. No. This one definitely is. So, in 2013, a 27-year-old former medical student was sentenced to 58, 58 months in jail for creating Mariposa Botnet, or a network of, quote, virus-infected computers used by criminal hackers. Yeah. Buddy, no. So... <laughs> Yes, he was a Slovenian. That's the connection here. His name was uh, either Matt Jazz or Matt Yaz. <laughs> Score Jank or Score Yank. I did not look up his name, if you can tell. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah. Score is a good chocolate bar, by the way. They're great. Uh, but he was found guilty of creating a malicious computer program for hacking information systems and assisting in wrongdoings and money laundering. So he got a little crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> the FBI estimated that at the time of his arrest, the Mariposa botnet could have infected as many as 8 to, to, as eight to 12 million computers including at banks, various companies, and government agencies. Wow, that's insane. It's a pretty big scale, and I guess a botnet, quote, yeah, this is all a quote, I should say, because <laughs> I don't know what a botnet is. Yeah, I have it's, no idea. <laughs> it's a network of malware-infected computers which can be controlled remotely and used to carry out attacks and other operations. So, oh, okay. virus infected computers, I guess. Sorry. Hmm. What do I know? On Fast and the Furious, they, spoiler alert, went to space with a car on their last one. So, who knows what can happen? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I am one, two, three movies behind. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah. I still Ooh. haven't even seen the last movie that had Paul Walker in it. Oh no. no. Oh, I like 7, 8, and. Is it 7, 8, and 9? Yeah, I think it's 7, 8, and 9 is the last three ones. And I actually thought, yeah, it's it's pretty good compared to. You have to go on BuzzFeed to understand the chronology of the first seven. Because you're like, when did that happen? And when yeah. did that come out? That's and what? 
Yeah. So confusing. Because I, yeah, I haven't seen from the last one was Paul Walker onwards, and I haven't seen the Hobbs and Shaw one. Mm. And... Yeah. And yeah, they to... really do address it after his death, like in the pre- and the other movies after that. They give like him a kind of a nod and yeah some cgi with his brother in the first one and then like a oh, poignant scene where he's like looking at vin diesel and then he drives off in his car and then the music's playing in the background where they're like and i really don't matter if i see you again oh, that's it's fun. very no. emotional it's so good sometimes those movies are just insane and then they're entertaining and then sometimes i'm like oh you got me in the feels <laughs> Yeah, they are good movies, I have to say. As much as I ragged on my brother for him mm. really loving them when he was younger, I binge-watched, like, all of them when Netflix briefly had them for, like, six oh. months. They had the first five of them. And I watched all of them in, like, two months. I mean, they've got the rock in them now, most of them. Like, I know he doesn't get along with Vin Diesel. Most of you might know they have still have the beef or whatever. Yeah. But... Doesn't mean they have to be in the same movie together. <laughs> and no. Helen Mirren's in there. It's amazing. Yeah. But I'll take The Rock side because The Rock is my favorite. Oh, how could you not? I love He's amazing. I feel like, I'm sorry, it seems like Vin Diesel's a good guy and all his movies, his like, character's all about family. But like, The Rock's just always about like having an insanely good work ethic. And yeah. so any tweets that I've heard about them working together, I feel like it's been related to that, where I'm like, well, maybe Vin Diesel uh, doesn't have as good of a work ethic, and maybe he's not as, you know, it's just not up to the rock standard. I don't know. <laughs> that's fair. And All right, I got a page left. Okay. <laughs> let's power through Shit. it. We can do this. Yes. Okay, I said what a botnet was. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ugh, that's why computer terms so <laughs> this particular botnet was designed to steal credit card data online banking passwords social media account info and more to attack your your personal information boo Ugh. it was also used to spread viruses and denial of service attacks quote unquote where a website servers will be overwhelmed with visits from infected computers all at once. Fun fact, you know, it's called the Maripo- Mariposa Botnet. Botnet. Mariposa is Spanish for butterfly. So, yeah. just to dive into that crypticness, the botnet got its name because it was created with software called Butterfly Flutter. That was alleged to have been written by Scoriank. I guess that's the guy we were talking about. Because remember, nobody knows how to say their names. So you probably forgot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, and, was that his name? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still not sure. It's either Scoriank or Scorjank. <laughs> and I'm so sorry. I've had my name said Alana and Alana. And yeah. Uh, you know, it just pronunciation can be hard. I get it. It's okay. <laughs> at least, even though I wear a name tag at all times that clearly states my name, at least 25% of people at work call me Chelsea every day. Oh my god. We Okay, so we. you know now I'm working more of a call center environment. The yeah. one girl's name is Deirdre. She's oh. the, we sometimes call her um, Beatrice. Because people will just hear whatever they want on the phone. They're like, Hi, my name's Deirdre. Okay, Beatrice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, one time I remember I was, uh, it was like a sales and service dinner. So like travel agents, you know, we'd done some good stuff. We're getting recognition, but it's a nice dinner. And then I'm meeting my friend Crystal and her husband, um, or maybe fiance or whatever at the time. And he's, I'm like, I'm Alana. And he goes, oh, Milana? Nice to meet you. <laughs> I was like, well, Alana, but close enough. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> anyway. The pain. Um, okay. So, yeah, he used a butterfly flutter. I guess that's where it got its name. It's not really that important. <laughs> but it was like computers in more than 190 countries were affected. So it was pretty big. Yeah, you almost got every single country in the world. <laughs> 
I don't know how many countries there are. Don't at me. I think I googled it when COVID <laughs> was first happening because that John Hopkins world map I was looking at like a hundred times a day. Um, mm-hmm. oh. And it had a countdown <laughs> of how many countries were mm. impacted by COVID. And I I think there's like 196 or something. So yeah, you got almost all of them. It's around like 200. Really? It's really close to 200 countries wow. in the world. I feel like it is a lot more than you think of, yeah. right? Like, I was just listening to a, I think it was drinking the Kool-Aid today, but, like, they were, like, talking about something in the Vatican. They were like, yeah, that's, like, a country, if you recall. Or, like, do you know that? And I was like, I was thinking, like, yeah, I do remember that. Like, it's the middle of Italy. It's Mm. the Vatican. It's where the Pope is. But it's literally considered another country. And, like, so, like, most people don't know about the little ones. Or, like, there's another little country that's, like, I don't think it's South Africa, but it's, like, literally in the middle of one of the African countries, and it's, like, totally self-contained, and you're like, how are you a country? Yeah. <laughs> Good for you, but how? Yeah, you're just surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, I guess if that's the case, then yeah. they really affected a lot of people, because more than 190 countries. I'm gonna Google it. Hold on. How many countries <laughs> in the world? Okay. Yeah. Also, the FBI teamed up with European agents. Um, okay, so there are 195 countries in the world today. Wow! That composes of 193 countries that are member states of the United Nations and two countries that are non-member observer states. Oh, shit! Who are the two non-members? I'm curious. <laughs> They're the whole... Holy See and the state of Palestine. I've never heard of the Holy See. H O L Y S E E. Holy See. Two words. S E E? Yeah. Like, not like an ocean. No. What? Oh, people oh also ask are there 249 countries in the world? No. Oh my god. According to Palestine and Israel and all that is a little bit confusing though because that's been fought over for years and years and years. I mean, I kind of get that, but... What does this Um, mean? Oh god. Okay, so (laughs) in December of 2009 uh, they gained control uh, of the botnet but shortly after it was seized back by one of the bad guys named Net Caro, and he used it to attack the defense intelligence, a Canadian security firm that was helping the FBI. Boo. He attacked the shit out of us, that fucker. <gasps> Net Caro. What did know. Canada ever do to you? <laughs> but, as it happens, this was the start of the downfall as he accidentally, or in my opinion, at least stupidly, logged in from his home computer rather than the secure VPN. And this led to them finding (laughs) them. (laughs) Yeah. They're like, once they found that guy, uh, whose real name was Florencio Caro Ruiz, Ruiz, and two other Spaniards, and then five months later they followed the trial to score Yank, like, again. (laughs) (laughs) Who had written the code for the program. In 2010, Skoryank was arrested, and 2013, he was sentenced. So this is basically all over now. But yeah. the one thing I did find that was, like, an update, yeah, was, like, an article... Oh, yeah, stumbled across uh, from the totalslovanianews.com website, published in October 2019. And it was like, German federal police have now arrested Matt Yaskor Yank. In early September, a U.S. federal court unsealed an indictment against Skor Yank and a few of his co-conspirators. So it would seem like what's they he... were trying to prosecute him. Yeah, what's he up to? Well, that's just it. It's like they were trying to dig up the past. 
Oh, like re-prosecute for whatever he's already in prison for, but in their country now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Basically, I believe so. Because it's like, I had a... Another quote, Martin Skoryank, CEO of HBIT, has confirmed that his son, so his son was the guy named in the case, Matt, yes, Skoryank. I'm sorry, the names. But... Oh, mine was a thousand times <laughs> worse. I had so many names and I knew none of it was going to make any sense. <laughs> You're like, uh... Well, it starts with score, like the chocolate bar. Yeah. So, yeah, his dad, Martin Skoryank, or CEO of HBIT, had confirmed that his son was arrested in Germany last week based on the indictment and the relevant international arrest warrant. So, there is no legal basis for the prosecution because Matthias Skoryank had already, has already been convicted for the same crime and has already served his sentence in full in Slovenia, the father said in a press release. Well, this is an unacceptable attempt for a repeat trial in the same case, something that is prohibited under Slovenian, European, as well as U.S. law, he added. Which is true. Like, he literally went to j Like, he got convicted for that one, too. Yeah. I think it was he, he just didn't serve as much time as the first conviction, where he killed someone and served 13 years. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It it's, was also hard to find information on this one. Yeah, sorry. It's fair. Like, I, I agree and disagree with, like, charging him for the same thing in multiple countries, you know? Because it happened in multiple countries <sighs> to millions of computers, possibly. Oh, true, true. And if it was, like, a murder case or something, that would just be, like, double jeopardy. And you can't do it, as we all learned from the movie. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Judd. But it's yeah. But what would the difference be if he like physically was in the countries doing those? Like if he was in Slovenia and did that in Slovenia and it just affected Slovenia and then went to like another country and then affected just that well... country, you could be convicted twice. But because he did it remotely out of one like central location, then true. he's only convictable once, you know? But I think they got him for the right crime. Yeah. When they processed him in, uh, whatchamacallit, yeah. in Slovenia. I'm like, I, I, I agree know, and I don't understand. agree. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, okay, well, I'm almost done. <laughs> Uh, already served his sentence. Yeah, it's kind of like a double jeopardy thing. They were like, we don't think we can prosecute him. And, oh yeah, as well as U.S. law. What didn't I say? The U.S. law enforcement authorities asked for Skoryank's extradition from Slovenia as early as 2011. And then Skoryank was sentenced to four years and ten months in prison in late 2013 for creating the Mariposa botnet software malware that had hijacked about 12.7 million computers around the world. He has already served out his sentence. So that's about all I have on it is that, like, they basically don't seem to be able to try him again because yeah. they kind of already have. Yeah. But... I don't know. If he does it again, then nail him to the wall. Exactly. But until then, I am not a lawyer, and yeah. this is all alleged. <laughs> don't sue me. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. <sighs> uh, but thanks for listening. This yes. has been your latest Castles and Cryptids. And if you like what we're doing. Yeah. We do have, I like it when some people say like, you know what, it'll always be free, but if you want to support what we're doing, we do have a Patreon, and it's yeah. got some extra episodes, and even just more even our, bonus our stuff two... to come. Yeah, oh, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. I want a good video episode. But, <laughs> <laughs> like a $2 level will get you like all the extra episodes and the Patreon shout out. And then like the middle level will get you all that plus any video minisodes that we do. Yeah. And the $15 level 
we'll get you to pick a fan pick. You can pick what we talk about. So that's pretty exciting too. And that's all on the the Castles Encrypted Patreon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other than that, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. And what by the time this airs, the I guess we'll have our military Patreon for September and then mm. October, super spooky October. Get ready. Oh my god. I'm it's really haunted. excited for October. It's creepy. <laughs> it's paranormal. It's horror movies. It's It's our Halloween. first October. <gasps> yeah. We're we're, we're talking about excited. a bunch of stuff because there's five Fridays in October, so we're doing five regular episodes instead of four and still doing a bonus episode. So yep. you're getting we don't six know what's episodes. gonna happen next year. Next year we might have to talk about whatever. So it's like you gotta just give it where you can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love a good spooky season though. It's just so nice. It's starting to finally be like a little bit with the crisper air nowadays. Not even it's still been pretty hot, but <laughs> yeah, it's still <laughs> just like a beautiful time of year. Yeah, above twenty to twenty five, yeah. like. Celsius, I, like you normal yeah. people, not in America. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I get up in the morning, I grab a coat because I go to work for <gasps> yes. 7 a.m. And then I leave work at 3 p.m. And people look at me like I'm crazy because I'm wearing a coat and it's like 24 degrees well, outside. The and other like, day well, it was, was going to rain. Yeah. I told Rain to take a jacket. Like I told our daughter to take a coat. I was like, man, it's supposed to be like a drizzly. Yeah. And then it wasn't. And I was so hot and I just had my rain jacket in the back of my car and I was like, oh man, she must, rain must have been hot walking home. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I did that Bad. on Thursday too. I'm like, it was supposed to rain. And when I had gotten up in the morning <laughs> to go to work, it had definitely rained overnight, but it was not currently raining, nor did it rain again during the day. <laughs> yes. My sunflowers did enjoy that. <clears throat> I got the tall one that's bigger than me. We're going to have to take some pictures. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, I love some. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, well catch us next week. Thank you for This has been Castles and Cryptids. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Breaker, Pocket Cast, and our YouTube channel. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. On our website, you can listen to all of our episodes as well as view pictures for each of our segments. Check out our Patreon page to view all of our tiers and become a Patreon supporter today to unlock monthly bonus episodes and behind-the-scenes content. We are working on an Ask Us Anything. You can submit questions by social media or by email at castlesencryptids at gmail.com. Do you have a spooky ghost story, a creepy cryptid sighting, or a thrilling true crime tale you would like to share and have us include in a future episode? Send us your listener story by social media or by email please include the name that you would like mentioned. Our music is by Kobe Fair. Our logo and artwork is by Antonio Garcia. Thanks for listening.